Ulrich Zwingli was roughly a contemporary of Martin Luther. He uh, was similar to Luther in some ways. They both spoke German, but uh, whereas Luther was from what we today call Germany, uh, Zwingli was from Switzerland, from the city of Zurich, uh, he, like Luther, was a preacher, and it was significantly out of pastoral, not just abstract theological concerns, that he was drawn to the need to see the church reformed. It's a little bit debated still how much Zwingli was an original and how much he learned from Luther and was inspired by Luther. I tend to think he was uh, inspired by Luther in a significant way. He had a different theolo theological training. Uh, Luther was trained in medieval scholastic philosophy and theology, whereas uh, Zwingli was much more trained in the new humanistic learning and um, much more early trained in Greek and Hebrew than Luther was, although Luther learned it later. Uh, so they came from slightly different educational backgrounds. They worked in slightly different environments. Uh, Luther was in a uh, university teaching theology in a somewhat small town, and uh, Zwingli was more in a, in a city, uh, not in a university, so thinking more in pastoral terms and in city terms. Uh, what's, what's important, I think, about Luther versus Zwingli is that it, it reminds us that the Ref Reformation was not just a single person phenomenon, uh, but rapidly spread to a number of important leaders and thinkers. Uh, Luther and Zwingli, of course, had a significant difference on the Lord's Supper. And uh, so it reminds us not only there were separate leaders, but there emerged theological differences. Zwingli felt the difference between himself and Luther on the Lord's Supper was not that crucial. Uh, he recognized it was real, but not uh, huge in, in Zwingli's mind. Luther saw the difference as much more significant and much more important, much more divisive, so that he was left really wondering whether Zwingli was a Christian or not. That's how serious it was from Luther's point of view. Um, the problem was, of course, very early on there emerged kind of crazies who claimed to also be reforming the church. And so Luther, in his pioneering role, had to try to evaluate who's crazy and who's just mildly divergent. Uh, finally, Luther and Zwingli were able to meet, and uh, Luther liked Zwingli better than he thought he would. They came fairly close together. But as is often the case with uh, humans in their meeting, while you're together, you have a little bit of trust, and then when you separate again, all the suspicions return and the wonders, wonderings arise. So uh, the real tragedy was that Zwingli died relatively young, uh, serving as a military chaplain in 1531. And uh, what that meant, of course, was there was no opportunity for further contact personally between Luther and Zwingli. It also meant that the successors to Zwingli in Zurich uh, felt that he was a martyr, that he was a hero, and therefore what he had taught had to be defended and maintained, and they felt even less room to negotiate with the Lutherans than Zwingli himself had. So uh, Zwingli uh, was uh, a, a hero. He was a faithful teacher of the gospel, in my judgment. He's often regarded as sort of the grandfather of Reformed Christianity. He, uh, because his life was shorter, was uh, not able to write anywhere near as much as Luther did. He probably was not as profound a theologian as Luther was, um, but he was a, a very fine uh, servant of the gospel and his early death was tragic, uh, not only obviously for himself, but for the movement in that it didn't allow continuing uh, personal reflection and perhaps uh, an ability to bring the Reformed and the Lutherans closer together.